Amazon S3 is the trusted primary storage for millions of customers from all around the world. With 11 nines of data durability, you can store and protect business critical data for virtually any use case. My name is David DeLuca. I'm a senior storage solutions architect for Amazon Web Services. In this demonstration, we're going to explore Amazon S3 Object Lock. Let's get started. Amazon S3 Object Lock can help prevent objects from accidental or malicious deletions and overwrites, allowing you to store data while enforcing write once, read many, or worm policies. You can use Object Lock to help meet compliance and regulatory requirements. Cohasset Associates have assessed S3 Object Lock for environments that are subject to SEC 17A4, CFTC, and FINRA regulations. Object Lock integrates with other S3 features, including S3 versioning, which is a means of keeping multiple variants of an object in the same bucket. Versioning must be enabled on a bucket in order to utilize Object Lock, and Object Lock retention settings are applied to specific object versions. S3 lifecycle management configurations continue to function normally when using Object Lock. However, protected object versions remain safe from being deleted by a lifecycle configuration. You can use S3 replication to enable automatic, asynchronous copying of locked objects and their retention metadata between S3 buckets. For existing objects, you can use S3 batch operations to manage object lock settings for billions of objects in a single batch job. S3 storage lens can bring visibility of your current data protection levels into a single dashboard. S3 object lock is enabled at the bucket level. However, you can apply custom retention for individual object versions. Object Lock provides two ways to manage object retention. A retention period, which specifies a period of time in which an object version remains locked. This value can range from one day to 100 years. When you set a retention period, you must select a retention mode. In governance mode, users cannot delete an object version or alter the lock settings unless they have special permission to do so. In compliance mode, a protected object version cannot be deleted, have its retention period shortened, or retention mode changed by any user. You can also set a legal hold, which provides the same protection as a retention period, but has no expiration date. It remains in place until you explicitly remove it. You also have the option of setting a default retention mode and retention period on the bucket. This would apply to all objects placed in the bucket, unless you explicitly override those settings at upload. In this demonstration, we're going to learn how to create and configure an Amazon S3 bucket with S3 Object Lock enabled, upload files using S3 Object Lock retention, set default S3 Object Lock policies, modify S3 Object Lock settings, place a legal hold on objects, attempt to delete protected objects, and finally, attempt to delete the bucket. Let's open the S3 Management Console and select Create Bucket. You can only enable Object Lock during the creation of the bucket. If you wish to use Object Lock on an existing bucket, please contact AWS Support. Let's name the bucket S3 Object Lock Demonstration. And please note that S3 bucket names must be globally unique. We're going to accept all of the bucket defaults with two exceptions. First, versioning must be enabled. Second, under Advanced Settings, we will enable Object Lock. Select the Acknowledgement checkbox and select Create Bucket. The bucket has been successfully created. Let's click on the bucket name to open it. S3 Object Lock settings cannot be specified on Upload using the S3 console. So we're going to use the AWS command line interface. Let's issue an AWS S3 API put object command. We specify the name of the bucket, the object key, which will be used as the name of the object, and the source file that we're uploading from the local workstation. We'll specify governance as the object lock mode and set the object lock retention period to a future date. The return message confirms that the object was uploaded successfully. We can then issue an AWS S3 API head object command to retrieve the object's metadata. Notice that our object lock settings have been captured. Let's see what will happen if we upload the same object a second time, 
but exclude the object lock settings. When we issue the head object command, we see that the object does not have any object lock retention settings applied. Keep in mind that S3 versioning is enabled on the bucket. So uploading the same object twice will create a new version of the object. In the S3 console, if we toggle the Show Versions switch, we can see both the current version of the object as well as the previous version. When we select the current version of the object, we see that it does not utilize an object lock retention. If we click on the Versions tab and navigate to the old version of the object, we see that it's protected using Governance Mode, as we specified in our first upload command. The key takeaway from this step is that object lock settings are applied to individual object versions. We've shown that S3 object lock settings can be applied or omitted when uploading objects. In some cases, this is the desired behavior. However, you may wish to set a default policy to ensure that all uploaded objects are protected. From the Buckets Properties tab, navigate to the Object Lock Settings and select Edit. To set a default retention, select Enable, then set the retention mode. Let's use Compliance mode, but remember that objects protected by this mode cannot be deleted by any user until the retention period has elapsed. With this in mind, let's set a retention period of one day. We then select Save Changes. Please note that you can set minimum and maximum allowable retention periods for a bucket using a bucket policy. This can help prevent misconfiguration of unwanted lock times. This example shows a bucket policy that sets a maximum retention period of 10 days. Let's return to the AWS CLI and upload a new object called Test2 without specifying any S3 object lock settings. When we issue the head object command, we see that the object is protected by compliance mode for one day. This demonstrates that the object inherited the default object lock policy. We can override this policy. Let's upload a new object called Test3 and explicitly state that we wish to use governance mode. When we issue the head object command, we receive confirmation that the object is using the settings that we stated at upload, not the default settings on the bucket. Let's return to the S3 console to explore modifying S3 object lock settings on existing objects. Let's select the object we just uploaded, Test3, which is being protected by governance mode. Under Object Lock Retention, select Edit. Governance mode will allow users with specific permissions to disable the retention, change the retention mode, and modify the retention date. By contrast, if we select Test 2, which is protected by Compliance mode, these settings cannot be changed by any user account until the retention period has elapsed. The only available option is to extend the retention period. Now let's talk about legal hold. Like a retention mode, legal hold prevents an object version from being overwritten or deleted. However, legal hold does not have an associated retention period, and it remains in effect until removed. You can place and remove legal holds regardless of whether the specified object version has a retention mode and period set. For example, suppose you place a legal hold on an object version while it is also protected by a retention period. If the retention period expires, the legal hold continues to protect the object until it is explicitly removed. Similarly, if you remove a legal hold while an object version has a retention period in effect, the object version remains protected until the retention period elapses. Let's add a legal hold to all three objects using the AWS CLI. We will issue an AWS S3 API put object legal hold command. Specify the bucket name, the object key, and legal hold status equals on. We'll repeat this command for test objects two and three. We can then issue the head object command to confirm their object lock retention settings. Test one does not have a retention period or mode set, but is protected by legal hold. Test 2 is protected by Compliance Mode and Legal Hold. Test 3 is protected by Governance Mode and Legal Hold. 
The key takeaway is that legal holds are completely independent from retention modes and retention periods. From the S3 console, let's attempt to delete our test objects. Let's select Test 1 and then Delete. Enter Delete in the dialog box and select Delete Objects. We receive a message that Test 1 was deleted successfully. This may seem surprising, since we know that Test 1 has a legal hold applied. However, when we select the Show Versions toggle switch, we see that we have created a delete marker and that the two versions of the object are still available. This is the expected behavior of an S3 bucket using versioning. Let's remove the delete marker by selecting it, then delete. Enter permanently delete in the dialog box and select delete objects. The delete marker has been removed. Now let's select the object, then the versions tab. From this screen, we can attempt to permanently delete an object version without creating a delete marker. Let's highlight the most recent version, select Delete, enter Permanently Delete in the dialog box, and select Delete Objects. The delete operation failed because this version of the object has a legal hold applied. Let's go back to the AWS CLI and issue a legal hold status equals auth command for this object version. When we repeat the steps to delete the object version, it now succeeds. What remains is the earlier version of the object. This was the first upload that we performed, in which we specified governance mode and did not apply a legal hold. Governance mode allows users with special permissions to modify or bypass the retention period. Therefore, we are able to delete this object version. Test 3 is currently protected by legal hold and governance mode. Let's remove the legal hold, and this time we'll do that from the S3 console. Once again, as a user with special permissions, we can override governance mode protection and delete this object version. So what about test two? We know we need to remove the legal hold. However, this object version is protected by compliance mode, which means it cannot be deleted by any user until the retention period has elapsed. Since we set a one-day retention, we will have to wait until tomorrow to delete this object version. This also means that we can't empty or delete the bucket until that retention period has elapsed. This concludes our demonstration. To learn more about S3 Object Lock, please visit the Amazon S3 product page. And thank you for watching.